Hey everybody, welcome to Undiluted Tech, and today let's take a look at Zorin 17 Pro. So, as you can see, it's nicely polished, as usual. Uh, let's take a look at what comes installed. We've got Kaden, OBS Studio, we've got LibreOffice, uh, we've got the Windows app support, we've got VirtualBox. Uh, and let's go to Zorin up here. Let's see what this, thing's, this thing looks like, all right? We got the jelly mode going on. Yeah, you've got to enable that. And then these are the all the layouts that come with uh, the Pro version. We've got six extra. And if we start from the bottom, we got the old school. I think that's XFC. I'm not quite sure. But, yeah. Got the old, uh, more like, I don't know, that's the Ubuntu one right there. And then we got the old windows in there. Uh, Mac Linux, which is the one that I'm running right now. And then you've got, uh, I think that's Windows 11. Now that's GNOME 2.0 or GNOME 43. And here we go, Windows 11. Uh, this is the Windows 11 version right there. That's what it looks like. And then we've got the old Windows 7 look-ish. Uh, same thing right here. So those are the layouts that you can get. So let's move on to uh, themes. And you've got three uh, backgrounds. You've got the light. You got the one that is automatic. You gotta do your own settings and the schedule there. And then you got the black background or the dark theme, which is what I'm running. And then for the accent colors, got the orange, the green, the red, the purple. I think that's teal, but I like blue. So, yeah. So moving on to effects. This is where you enable that jelly mode. And then, you know, an animation. So if you got those opened up you can do a whole lot of things see if you see if you disable jelly mode you know things are consistent but with the jelly mode kind of wobbly and that's the spatio desk mode you know can I control tab which is pretty awesome to say you know finally we can get something that um <laughs> it's enjoyable to look at uh same all this hasn't changed much you know if you want to show your icons on the desktop this way you enable them and then we, let's go to fonts yeah here shortly once i get around this all right so, so i want a 14 as a size at least for me I, my eyes don't see that well so I'm going to switch this up to uh, 14, so all of them. Now, the reasons why I like Zorin OS, people might say it's for only beginners, but it's Linux. You can do whatever you want to do with it, right? It's how you use the tool, not what comes through the tool or what it looks like. I personally like it. Um, for this, for the Pro version, you get to pay. It used to be $39, now it's 48 which... Yeah, it's a little bit more, but yeah. Anyways, why I like Zorin OS, it seamlessly connects to your phone with the Zorin Connect. Right now, I got my phone connected right there, and I can actually send stuff from my phone straight to my desktop if I want to take a look at it later. That's why I like it. Uh, I can also see my text messages on here, reply my text messages when I'm on that desktop. Uh, it's a very neat feature. Uh, we can do a lot with it. Uh, when your call comes on, it mutes. Um, Zorin Connect, it's a nice feature. That's the reason why I think I like Zorin OS so, so much. Besides the um, the looks and the feel, that's why well, my kids use Zorin OS. Previously, on my laptop, I've been using Zorin OS, the older version, the 16 Pro, but that's because the 16 Pro on my desktop, I got NVIDIA, and NVIDIA graphic cards only work with Linux 6.0 and up, and 
Today's version of Zorin OS, which I don't think a lot of people mention, it comes to Karno 6.2, which is a good trend right there. But anyways, uh, just checking this thing out. It's looking pretty good. Uh, it's the desktop. Nothing has changed there most of the time. Mostly, still looks the same. Uh, what else? Let's take a look at uh, OBS Studio. Now, I've been having issues with this because of my graphic card. So, I was trying to record this using OBS, but uh, it wouldn't let me. For some reason, I keep getting this error right here. I'll figure that one later. But I bet it has something to do with my graphic cards, but I could be wrong. I'll troubleshoot that later. Uh, so right now I'm recording this with uh, Zorin own screenshot tool, which can also do screen capture. But it doesn't do uh, the voice. So the voice right now I'm using Audacity. That's what I'm record. I'm doing a voiceover using Audacity right now. Just because this tool just not come with a place to do an audio source or add a source to your, add the microphone. <laughs> oh gosh, what am I saying? You get what I'm saying, right? But it's, so far it's recording the screen pretty well. Can't complain. The time it on, uh, the thing has changed. As you can see, I haven't done it a lot on this one because it's a brand new installation. Uh, I just wanted to, I, I did the better with the core. But I've always supported Zorin OS, so I always buy the Pro version. I mean, it's a few dollars for every two years, which is not bad. We support their work they do. And let's take a look at the software version right here. Yeah? So it has a lot of software that come in the flat pack. Uh, I don't know if I'm a fan of flat packs, but it is what it is. But there's, uh, there's plenty of them. And this is all the list of softwares that come pre-installed with the Pro version. Uh, right here, I haven't installed anything yet. So let's install a few things here. Um, I like to code once in a while. So let's see if we can find Visual Studio. Uh, let's, uh, I'm still screwing around here, so... I want to install a few text editors, maybe a browser or two. Uh, but for some reason, on this version of Zorin, I can't install PyCharm. And I don't know why. In the better, it didn't install. Uh, it also didn't install on this Pro version. I tried to install it before I did this recording, but... Oh, actually, we'll see, because uh, I recorded it, so you should see the error. <sighs> so that's the software store. Still some Visual Studio. Ah, uh, come on. There we go. Yeah. So it's a little lagging. That's one thing I've noticed, but I think it's with all... Linux system or stores, they lag a little bit. Uh, sometimes they take like half a, half a minute or 15 seconds or something, like right here. Uh, I'm trying to type something and tell the J, but I should be doing PyCharm. And there's three versions of PyCharm. I believe the first one is 3.1, the last one is 3.2, which is the one that I wanted, but for some reason, I'm unable to install it or oh, the app store. I'm going to have to do that manually. So, yeah, this is the 3.1. 3.1. I don't know what the difference is. I don't know why there's three of them. Um, so, let's try to install this. Uh, we'll let it live to its thing. And there you go. It's unable to install PyCharm community version. 
Ah, uh, not sure why, but it's all good. Um, that's, that's the status code. I don't know what the 419 conflict message. That's something I can look up later. Okay, well, come on, let's move on. And here's what I was talking about. Sometimes the stores can take a while. Like, by now it should have popped up, but hey, it is what it is. Ah, not going to complain too much. Mm. So, let's see. What am I looking for here? Go back here and let's see if we can find Sublime. Version 4169. Might be a newer version out there, but at least it's Sublime 4. Um, let's add some extra browsers. Say Chrome, maybe? Or Mulvadi. Uh, just try, let's start with Chrome. So we're going to do on Google Chrome. And then Chromium Browser. See, this right here, it's a little annoying because that's a long time for it just to try to populate, right? But hopefully in the future it gets better. I don't know. All right. Uh, let's do pzip just for unzipping files. Just for the heck of it, right? Testing this thing out. And uh, let's do Postman for when we're testing APIs and whatnot. Uh, I think that should be it. Uh, oh no, let's add my favorite notes. Not taking up note note snook or note nook. Note snook. Well, one of the two. Uh, this is a privacy focus. Uh, by the way, support Note Snook. Uh, maybe one of these days I should do a review on it because it has some pretty cool features like the web clipper and you can upload PDFs, I believe. Uh, it's a very, very nice notes taking app. So check it out. Uh, let's do some updates. I don't know. So I already got some updates. Yeah. Cool. All right, this is a browser that comes default is Mozilla. Uh, see if what features come with these. I already forgot what features were there, but uh, let's see. So, mm. Now, how do you do that again? Double tap in the super key. Okay. Huh? I guess I only got two windows, so yeah. Just pass your desktop. Here is where you use Alt Tab or Super Tab, and you get that 3D um, thing. But I guess you activate it and then you take your mouse and you move it around. So if you've got so many workspaces going on, that's how you do it. Um, I guess I was doing it wrong when I was testing it, but okay. My jolly mode, jolly, jolly, jolly mode. Yeah, as you can see, my background is kind of messed up because my graphic cards drivers are messed up, but yeah, 
once you guys get a hold of this, this is, you know, I mean, the features look cool, right? It will make you want to love using Linux. That's what I'm getting at. But the power of Linux is not the looks. It's what you can do in the command line. So if you're able to do more powerful things in the command line, then the looks can be deceiving, right? But in order for people to use Linux, you got to give them something that is cool. And then from there, they'll be able to use it. All right. Now let's go to the about. As you can see, this is a Zorin 17 Pro version, and it's Wayland. Um, you can actually upgrade from here, but I already got the Pro, so the upgrade wouldn't work here. So, you know, just for software updates. So uh, as far as this, I think it's kind of standard on the settings in Linux computers, you know, slightly different from, you know, uh, distribution to distribution, but hey, this is, uh, this is what you get for 40, almost 50 bucks, right? You get the layouts, the different layouts, then you're not limited to the three that they offer in the call. Uh, you get support, um, and then you get all the software is pre-installed for you, so you don't have to go in there and install like Kden Live or BF Studio. So I mean, it's not like you can't install those in the core. You can, but to support the project, also, fifty bucks is not a lot, right? I mean, in this economy, it is. But um, yeah, that's it, guys. There's uh. That's it. Cool. Thank you for checking out. Bye.